greetings on International Human Rights Day. I think this is an excellent opportunity to gauge where we are, uh, where you are in human rights progress and to identify next steps to be taken. I warmly welcome the development of the National Action Plan for Human Rights in Scotland. Uh, this is an excellent initiative and I think it clearly demonstrates uh, your commitment to human rights. Uh, Scotland is not alone. You, you, you're joining several other countries including Finland, Spain and Sweden uh, that have also developed national action plans. Uh, Finland, where I visited in June, adopted its national action plan in the context of the Universal Periodic Review, just like in Scotland. Uh, a little bit earlier I visited Austria and they're considering the preparation of a national action plan and I hope that they can draw inspiration from, uh, from, from your experience and the experience of other countries who are further ahead. Uh, this is excellent news I, because I think we need to be systematic much more systematic than we've been until now about human rights work. We need to take a, a proactive approach uh, to prevent violations and to implement our obligations. Uh, evaluations of the Swedish national action plans have shown that systematic work uh, pays benefits. It, if the gaps, the duties and the measures are clearly identified, sustainable progress can be made. Uh, human rights has become a part of the daily work uh, of public authorities uh, and it has improved transparency and accountability. Now my office has encouraged the preparation of national action plans uh, for some time now. My predecessor issued very detailed recommendations on systematic work for human rights in 2009 and I'm very pleased uh, that you in Scotland found that work to be useful. Uh, the first step uh, of course is assessing the human rights situation uh, in a given context. Uh, and I think it's very important not to forget the specific problems of disadvantaged groups and uh, in the Scottish context I understand these are travelers and trans people. Uh, today you're not only taking stock of progress achieved to date but also identifying a shared framework of responsibilities and agreeing measures that need to be taken. Now these measures you should have progress indicators, they should be realistic, they should be time bound uh, and of course some of it requires money. Uh, the key, I think, is the participatory process of getting where you are today and continuing in this way because I think this contributes to the legitimacy of a national action plan. It creates shared ownership and improves the effectiveness of implementation. Uh, I'm very happy that this participatory uh, approach has been uh, followed uh, in Scotland. I'm particularly uh, pleased that you took special efforts to listen to marginalized groups. The involvement of local authorities I think is also very important as uh, they have many key responsibilities uh, in implementing human rights. The ultimate test of course is implementation uh, and improved human rights outcomes. Will people live better uh, afterwards? Uh, but I think the process itself, an inclusive participatory process itself is, is a big achievement. And I think the approach taken by the Scottish Human Rights Commission is commendable. Uh, I think it's it will be very useful to share this experience uh, with others in Europe, especially other national human rights institutions, uh, to encourage further systematic work for human rights. I think the, fa the fact that the Scottish, Com Scottish Commission currently chairs the European group of national human rights institutions will facilitate this task. I wish you every success in your bold initiative uh, and really look forward to hearing about the progress achieved because I think it's important not only for Scotland uh, but for many others in Europe. Thank you.